Here at The Box Seat, we welcome your feedback. Please get in touch with us via email or social media. Yep, we love getting it, and we've been getting some feedback. We certainly have, good and bad. Here's uh, the latest that's come through, and uh, good on you, Tim Nash. I assume that's how you say your last name there. Um, you've changed your name a couple of times through this, Mike. I like this part. While I'm a thoroughly entertaining guy, Mark Guerin is one of racing's most reliable <laughs> contrary indicators. I don't even know what that means, but I tell you what, Tim, you do have a point. My selections for the better of the week have been dreadful so far. I promise you, I will try harder. All right, so that's the first of our feedback that we've received, um, and we do appreciate you uh, coming through. Hi guys, the show in recent weeks has provided Harness Racing followers with so much excellent information. That's what we plan to do, isn't it? Um, yeah, we're looking forward to the Harness Jewels as well as you are, uh, John Stinson. And uh, yeah, I'm interested in feedback on what people A, think of the jewels, what could be better, and B, what they think of their proposed handicapping point system, or do they even care, Greg? So yeah. just get hold Let of us, us if you want to give us a buzz. All right, we've got plenty ahead for us, harness racing wise, this week. So let's uh, rip through it. $40,000 pick six at Manawa 2 under the lights with Craig Thompson and Mark Cookson, you would assume. Forbury Park, 10 races there. H Alexander his Park. name is Mark, by the way. Yeah, got that right. Okay, yeah, cool. His name's Mark. Uh, $150,000 PGG rights and uh, another opportunity for Spanish Armada. Yeah, it gets a lovely draw, doesn't it, uh, Greg? I think drawn three or four. 60k and... pick six there. Yeah, 60. It would have been nice to get 75. We Not tried to get there. it last week, but yeah. uh, 60. got second. Michael Gurund. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's my fault. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Massive day Saturday. $200,000 there. PGG rights and yearling sales final. We'll touch on that in a moment, as we will. The Neville R final. 38th running that series. Uh, they've got the $65,000 two-year-old trot and uh, an age trot for $40,000, which is a really interesting uh, field, $25,000 at Timaru. The pick six there, and Manawatu will have the second of their days. Speaking of the uh, $200,000 two-year-old open, here's the market and the seven runners, of course, for the All-Stars. One ninety-five into one eighty, more the better. Uh, we'll very, see. very fair. Yep. Bookie's giving you overs. It'll start a buck fifty, fellas. Surely. Yep. Yep. From that barrier draw, hard to see many reasons you can find to suggest it'll get beaten. Well, it's got stable mates around it to help it a little bit, but I think it'll hold up early up from barrier number one, Greg. And the worst situation it's going to be is in the trail. So I thought the dollar ninety-five was overs, to be honest. Yep. Uh, so that's the first of our features. Uh, let's get to where it got beaten last time, more the better. It was by Vasari, who's drawn to its outside. Tended to be just a sprint home this race, but he was still very good. Yeah, he, he was, and, and we highlighted last week on the show that it was a great drive by David Butcher, and a gap of six weeks between races for more the better. I think, A, he'll improve a lot with a run, and B, he's got a better barrier draw this week, and that should ensure him getting the victory. If I thought Vasari at barrier number four will go forward, uh, like he did in this video from barrier eight. Other horses in the race, we're going to talk about pacing major out wide, running to the line nicely, and fourth is drawn behind Vasari. Greg, that's not going to be a bad draw. No, it's uh, supposed to be pretty nice sort of a day there at Eddington as well. The race record and New Zealand record held by Isaira at 2.20. That might be on the cards to be beaten. Yeah, look, I don't see too much early pressure, though, because if Vasari gets across, then they just sit there. If uh, more the better leads in a race worth that much, can you attack and drop out? So everybody would be pretty happy to take a bit of money. I, I just don't see how this horse gets beaten. If it produces its maximum effort and it's not unlucky, it'll just win. The dollar dollar ninety five was enormous, dollar eighty still generous. Um, run it through your multi. So Craig, I can't I, I take it you boys are picking it to win. Well we're both well, we made it a bit of a week. When, when that was prior to the fixed yeah. odds coming out too, Greg, to be honest. And um, I thought from barrier one it's just set up on his run at Alexandra Park. He was clearly better than pacing major. I haven't seen anything in the last three weeks to change my mind. All right, twenty fifth running of that good race, uh, the Neville R Phillies final and Golden Goddess has come up with barrier one. 2.50 now, 2.30, and a wee drift for Dream About Me. Intriguing where they've drawn, along with stablemate Piccadilly <laughs> Princess. This is enormously interesting on many fronts, because Golden Goddess has good gate speed, has barrier one, and if you're on her, or if you're on her, you want to see her stay in front. But what do you do at Dream About Me, who actually comes into barrier three, or Piccadilly Princess? Is there an option for one of those horses to go forward? Do you hand to the stable mate? We saw a race at Addington last week, just a minor race, G.I. Joe and uh, Any Chance, Mother Marks and Natalie's went, for, went wide. forward together, locked at three wide. Mm. And we're seeing more of that. We mentioned it on the show last week. Different owners. A exactly. And that, these, again, different owners. Really interesting to see how this whole thing pans out. I think Golden Goddess has to be top tip. 
All right, let's have a look at Louisiana Belle Midfrew. I know she's coming off the second row and put these videos together before uh, the barriers come out, but you can only win and, and win an open company at Group 1 level. Oh, super performance to beat the older horses, Greg, but that was from a fortuitous barrier draw. She's drawn barrier number 14 here. Um, she'll follow out Raka Ray. She'll get a run through, Greg, but at the best she's going to be is either outside the leader or three wide because I can't see one of the Purden Rasmus and Ten handing up to her. Uh, her go will be the following our week with a better draw. Of course, uh, all of the races on Saturday will be on TRB Trackside too. What that'll allow us to do, uh, Matthew Cross will be on track with me, is a decent sort of preview post races one, two and three. Let's have a look at uh, some of the Alabar uh, Super Series finals because there's three of those. Ears burning. Well, its ears are burning because it's running some really good time, Craig, and almost pushing its way into a harness jewel spot. Well, he, well he's just on the verge of getting there now, Greg, a son of grin from ear to ear. I, I thought his win two starts ago had the mark of a very good horse beating Kashana. What I like to him, I, I think there's a lot of bottom to him. I don't think there's a lot of acceleration or high speed about him but I think he's a horse that once he's in front he's very hard to run down and he had a couple of pretty good ones in Alpha Rock and the poor court, tra uh, court train runner chasing him down but uh, he's a lovely horse preferential barrier draw puts him on the outside I don't think that'll stop him from winning all right, uh, big, big chance uh, in that one. Second of those finals, uh, Captain Dolmio. He's impressed us at Addington before, going 3-7. Michael Guerin, and here he beat a fair type in Benicio. Yep, the $10 that turned up, I think the 91 and 3-7 won't be turning up again anytime soon. Um, lovely staying horse, just finds the line. Long straight doesn't tend to bother him. So, look, he, he's another one of these horses who this series is built for. They're built for horses who are coming through the grades. Um, I think it's something Addington's got enormous. He had a trial during the week at Mott, so he's, he's had a little bit of time between races. Uh, that trial he ran second, he wasn't pushed, he was in front of Robert Dunn Colours and it was a nice quiet trial. Yeah, and of course uh, he's based at the beach uh, at uh, Robert Dunn's, as was the case last time he's up. Let's have a look at La Livre's Gift, who's racing really well and gets beaten by a couple of smarties here. Well it does, um, Harry of Mott, one of them, but a very nice uh, type and the other one, obviously great things happen, they're not in this race, Greg. Um, she's a lovely mare, she's again on the cusp of the jewels and, and racing in a race where she can win because she's off the back mark of 20 metres. The main dangers will be Destiny Jones. He's like the winner. Last week's winner, Pawnee and Train Quivert, I thought definitely a chance in it, but gee, she's racing well. I mean, Sunny Ruby's a class act. Harriet of Mott's a class act and Great Things Happen's a class act. Those three in this race would be mighty short. You got the $150,000 final on Friday night. Um, yeah, well, let's have a look at Spanish Armada. She continues to win, of course, and uh, she's likely to do it again from the barrier. Delightful Memphis. I can, I can see a more aggressive opening couple of hundred metres here. Yeah, I, I can as well, but I don't know if it'll change the result. I think the barrier draw is very key to Delightful Memphis drawing inside Spanish Armada. That hasn't happened. Uh, they closed the gap between them here to about a neck at the line. Uh, Renska B was good. I thought the bigger winner out of the draw is, is definitely Strawberry Stride. She gets up barrier number two and she's got Gatesby to get across the one horse. And finally, she gets a barrier draw, yeah. but uh, Spanish Armada is expected to be winning again. All right, uh, what about our best bets of the week? Michael, you found... I'm trying harder, week, fellas. Mate. I am trying harder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, more the better for you boys. Dollar, uh, what's the price? What's it going to pay on the tote? $1.50? Oh, $1.55, so, $1.60. So you take the dollar eighty now? Well, yep. yeah. yeah. Easy. Those who got the dollar ninety five, good on you. Just don't back my one. All right, let's have a look at some of the multis because there'll be a few going through. Uh, more the better, I'm sure. $600 one, uh, decent widespread there, including Sunny Afternoon, who broke the maiden status uh, over the weekend. Uh, a return of $3,084 there. I don't think the under-20 rugby league result was ever in doubt. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> and obviously that funder thought so. Uh, we've got some others uh, landed as well. Uh, that bottom one's a pretty smart play, Michael. A couple of $9 what about the pops. $2, Gintaris and the Cola. You should have had five dollars. It would have cost you three dollars more. <laughs> yeah. And you would have got five grand. Make sure you spend five, not two next yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Good on you, Johnny. That was good to see that horse uh, win as well. And uh, a multi, decent multi that was uh, missed there. Wabi Sabi and Blazing Under Fire. Some other uh, final field bets that did come in. Courage to Live. Continuing this run for Paul. Tell you what, the 8,000 on Kamani, whew, at the top of the yeah. straight, yeah. that wouldn't have been a lot yeah, of fun. It was a combination of a wet track and. Um, yeah. Pretty uh, tough got, early got there, they still, The money's yeah. in the account. Yeah. Absolutely. And here's some who didn't do the business she's, for them. She's a problem because she lacks speed. Donegal better Gretchen. Horses who lack speed can always get beaten. All right.
Uh, there's a decent uh, look at some of the winners and losers. Our thanks to Richard Wilson for sending those through. We'll have another lot of those uh, next week. Craig, look forward to the action. Uh, we'll get the coverage on Thursday night, obviously, to cover Friday mm. and Saturday. But Friday night, Alexandra Park, it's an intriguing race. Good, there. they've got 120 norms here this week, Greg. And uh, they've got fullish fields, 11 races there. Um, and I can't wait to Saturday. I'll sit back and enjoy your coverage there uh, from, I think, around about 11.30 in the morning. So stay tuned. That's a great card, the Alabar card. Should be fantastic. Michael, I know you'll enjoy it as well. Yeah, looking forward to it. Also, looking forward to this time next week. Do we still think Dream About Me is the best three-year-old filly in the country? Will that change on yeah. Saturday? Yep, we'll find out for sure. Uh, that's been your box seat. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll catch you again in seven days' time.